So we've cut some pretty big stuff with this sawmill. The sawmill is about a year and a half old and we have cut some logs that were too big for it. And I don't wanna say we abused it, but I have pushed the sawmill to its limits and a little past. So I guess first things first is I'm not beating up the sawmill. This sawmill has done everything that it has been rated for. I just really wanna make sure you understand that I am not beating the sawmill up. It's just got a lot of wear on it. If you own a sawmill, you will replace bearings from time to time. The sawmill has just come to the point in its life where it has reached the time where it's gonna need some heavy maintenance. The positive thing to take away from this is that the belts and the bearings and most of the parts that wear out are readily available at your local bearing store. It'll be, as soon as chicken, he'll be ready to get back in trouble home. Look at chicken for a minute. Hey, I really appreciate you watching our channel. We'd appreciate it if you'd hit the thumbs up and subscribe for us. Also, the little bell notification will let you know when we put out something new. So click that too. God bless. So this little work table I've got has been the handiest thing ever. See if I, I got me a new impact too the other day. I think I already showed you all that. Let's see what this thing will do. At least I've got a documentation of how this all goes back together. It's got a couple of shims right there that go on first. So that come right off. Nothing really fancy about that bearing. I'm sure I can get that at the bearing supply store. All right, so that's the easy ones. We've got two of these bearings. We'll clean these up, get the numbers off of them. And then this is the other one. And like I said, this has got this little you want external. Click that and it turns the other way. It's got a little lever there. Of course, Tanya was here to film this, but we gotta come right out. How about that? Go ahead and take the other side out. All right. So I've got this little, I don't know, it's a six ton press from, I guess it's from, I don't know where I got it from, Harbor Freight maybe? Been years ago, I've had it forever. But it's handy to have around for this little old stuff like this right here. Uh, definitely got some noise in it, for sure, rough. Now this, this, saw, this sawmill has cut a lot of, of timber. So we've had it for a little over a year. I can imagine these bearings should be pretty, pretty beat up. Probably should change them all, but the, I'm, I'm not gonna change the ones on the big wheels because they literally make no noise. So we're gonna go ahead and put the uh, new bearing back inside the belt guide. This is the belt tensioner or the idler tensioner, I guess you'd have, but it actually provides uh, tension to the belt. And uh, it's got a couple of rings in here. Not bad shape. We're gonna go ahead and put a little, little of the uh, Kano arrow coil on it. I don't know if that's how you say it, but that's some good stuff. It smells like pine oil too. All right, so that is that. So these, uh, those new uh, pliers I got, you, uh, you can they become inner or outer just by changing that little switch. That's the neatest thing I've ever seen. We're gonna go ahead and put one clip ring in on the one side, and then we'll push the bearing through from the other side till it touches the clip ring. So this bearing is a 6205R or 2R SC3. Uh, went down and had it matched up at our local bearing store. And looks to be pretty cut and dry how we're gonna put that in. First thing we're gonna do is just set this bearing and then put the plate on top of it. This won't push it all the way down, but it will get the, the bearing into place so we have enough room to set the 
set the socket on top of it. Virtually no pressure at all to do this. So we got it pushed down to the top of the... And what you're gonna need is a big, a big socket. It's probably not the perfect tool, but when you're in a shop, a small shop, you're gonna work with what you got. And the socket's big enough that it actually touches the metal on the outside. That's the really important thing. You don't want to push pressure on the center of the of the uh, uh, bearing. You want to push it on the outer ring. So all we're going to do now is just push this dude down until we feel a little bit of pressure. That should be enough. pretty good about it. As long as we can get that clip ring in there, we're going. So I like to put a little bit of pressure on them so it's just a hair loose and spin it around, make sure that it's seated. So it's seated on both sides. Feel pretty good about it. So now we have a perfectly quiet bearing. All right, so now we've got these blade guides. Once you look here, you can see where the bearing's been spinning around on this, it looks like. That's not good. Got the two washers. We'll clean this thing up pretty good. I thought about putting some Loctite on this, but I just don't see the need because the screw, the bolt's so much bigger. All right, so I thought about putting some Loctite on this bolt, where this bolt hole is, but this, this bolt is so much bigger than this bearing I don't think there's going to be an issue there, and I don't really want to get it uh, so tight that it it's hard to get off next time. So this is the new bearing, and it is perfectly smooth and quiet. And then this is the old bearing, and this is the old bearing that is good. Here's the... These things are loud. You probably can't hear it on the phone. I'm filming on the phone today because that's all I had with me. But there's a lot of play in these, and there's no play in these. So we'll go ahead and put the, we'll clean these, clean these off real good so that uh, the mating services are clean. Bearing first, and the two washers. And I'll go ahead and thought for a second I got the wrong bearing. Use my impact driver. Perfectly silky smooth. Do the same thing with the next one. Now this one, for whatever reason, had three washers. So it never hurts to break out your manual again. And so I was reading some important notes here. It says the blades to have no downward pressure. The blade is to be straight across from the band wheels uh, to band wheel. And it's supposed to float between these teeth or the guide, the blade guide that's not supposed to touch, it's supposed to float. Um, the guides are to be perfectly parallel to the blade. In other words, the guides are not to be angled. And I will admit I have hit those and knocked them out of center before, uh, but I still wasn't throwing, throwing blades. It says the back of the blade is not to consistently contact the thrust block. It should only make contact occasionally. Uh, mine don't have thrust blocks, it has the thrust bearings. Uh, but still, you're not supposed to, when, the, when, the, when it's no load on it, it shouldn't touch these bearings. It should only touch these bearings in the, you know, when you really are pushing on the, pushing on the saw blade, uh, pushing forward. So the gap between the guides and the blade is to be two or three thicknesses of paper. Um, so it's just a little, little, it never hurts to break out your manual again. We are going to fix the sawmill today. As you already seen in the little prior clips, or maybe, and I haven't yet, uh, where we put these new bearings in. So I've got everything here put together. Now all I have to do is, first thing that goes on is the, adjust, the adjuster. Spacer and a washer. Got the pulley with the spacer and the adapter in the middle. This. Again, we're going to tighten this up. 
tight enough that it'll still slide up and down, but not so tight that it's going to get in the way or hinder the movement of it. This is going to go up and down on this. Got to barely, barely tap it to make it work. This here. Put the slack out, then we'll go ahead and tighten up the rest. Let that belt have enough tension on it that it's not flopping around because it'll cause the blade to come loose. We've already established that. I feel pretty good about that part. Now I'm just gonna put this all together. All right, so now the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and put my blade guides back on. He's got brand new idlers. So this, I really wished I had a paid attention to which one came from where. I don't see that that's a big, a big deal. They're exactly the same in every way, uh, but I, I don't know. So we'll go ahead and hope for the best. Do is just put those all the way back. I think this is actually the right ones because this one over here was a little difficult to get on. Looks pretty good. So I've got five brand new blades. I mean, these dudes are sharp and brand new, never even been out of the box. So we're going to go ahead and take them out. Try to do it without cutting my hands off. First thing I'm going to do is grab my big heavy gloves. These boogers will bite you. Come, these are actually Frontier Saber Tooth uh, blades. They are. I've got some Cooks, and I've been using Cooks, but I had some Frontiers as well. So let's see. Yeah, this is this is the scary part. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and set this over here so I don't take the paint off the truck. So Gizmo was worried I was gonna take the paint off of Gizmo. Got the wheel backed all the way off, and I said I didn't. I tightened it back up yesterday because I was looking at something. So I'm backing the wheel all the way off to the neutral position. So there's no tension on that spring at all. And this again, this is a brand new Frontier blade right out of the box. And we'll go ahead and make sure it's tracking correctly. So what I want to do now is just pull this blade guide out. I don't even want it to, I just want that blade guide wheel just to barely nick, just barely just graze the back of it. I mean like a, maybe a half a sheet of paper between the the wheel. This is my own my own opinion. I think the book calls for a little bit more space, but I'm having trouble with it staying on. So I'm gonna go a little bit tighter. Plus this is brand new bearings and I bought a box of bearings. So if this happens again I'm gonna be ready. Alright so now with this so I can push back on this blade ever so slightly I'm not push back and feel it touching that bearing. So I think we're good there. Let's tighten this down. And according to this, the blade guide should be just about three pieces of paper thickness between the up and down. So I'm gonna loosen these up. I don't want any, I don't want these to touch right now. There's no, the blades are not touching. Just to be sure, we'll rotate one full cycle. All right, I feel pretty good about that. We're gonna test this dude out. We got the saw blade put back on it, bearings put back on it. Listen, I think I got high hopes. We run the we run it pretty hard, so let's check the oil. We just changed oil in it probably about an hour ago. Perfect clean, completely full. It sits fuel, so I'm not gonna worry about fuel right now. Throw the choke on it and we'll crank it up, let it warm up, and then we'll see if it throws the uh, saw blade again. What 
happened before it was throwing a saw blade. Choke on. Run about a half choke right now. Let it warm up. Moment of truth, we'll see if it spins off. It's actually, is, it sounds smooth like it did when we first bought it. So this sawmill has sawed a lot of logs up and I saw some oversized stuff that was too big for it. So uh, I have actually probably, you know, you might even say that I abused this sawmill a little bit. I am leaking a lot of fluid back here on the back side though. All right, so here's our new problem. The little O-ring that goes through the, the tank that holds the fluid in, and we're running diesel, and it, this little valve here turns the fluid on and off when you're using it or not using it. Uh, apparently, that little O-ring doesn't like diesel. The tank is perfectly solid, but the, the little O-ring and this hose that comes with it really doesn't like diesel either. So we're gonna have to, if we're gonna use diesel, we're gonna have to upgrade so unfortunately, we're in the middle of the woods and all I got is sawdust. I'm gonna throw a bunch of sawdust under this and see if I can keep from making a big old giant mess. I can go throw it on the burn pile. Y'all don't fret none, we got a fix for this, but it'll be in the next video.